Arsenal return to European action tonight. Shakhtar Donetsk are the visitors to Emirates Stadium with the Gunners looking to bounce back from a disappointing result and performance at the weekend. Has the reaction to the Bournemouth defeat been over the top? Were we right to question Mikel Arteta's setup and some of the individuals involved? Fed up of people telling you that you can't complain about referees? I know I am. Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast with me, Harry Simiou. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday so far. It is match day. The Gunners are in Champions League action tonight. We take on Shakhtar Donetsk at the Emirates Stadium, looking to put another three points on the board as far as the league phase go, hopefully strengthening our position further in that, but also looking to bounce back from what was a really, really disappointing evening um, down at Bournemouth on Saturday. I think some of the reaction to this has been um, a little bit over the top. Like I was really down in the dumps about it on Saturday night. Sunday, I didn't feel a great deal better. And obviously when City won in the way that they did and then Liverpool uh, took all three points against Chelsea, a game that you looked at as a potential problem fixture for them, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't deflated. And you guys will know when we did the Harry Reacts episode. Yep. Brilliant name, isn't it? Uh, really imaginative and creative. When we did that, I talked quite a bit, didn't I, about sort of, you know, the fact that it's okay to have felt down in the dumps after what we'd witnessed at the weekend. But there's no time for us to sit there and feel sorry for ourselves, not just as a team, not just as players, not just as management, but as fans as well. You know, we need to get right behind this team because we've got two big games in the space of a week at home in front of our own fans. People will look at the Shakhtar game and think it's Shakhtar Donetsk. It isn't like this huge blockbuster fixture that maybe the Liverpool game is. And some people will probably find it quite difficult to motivate themselves to go down there. I would say this. It's a great opportunity for us to bounce back. It's a great opportunity for us to strengthen our position in the Champions League phase. A, a new format for a competition that we all know inside out, having participated in it for such a long time. And, you know, particularly if you're a fan of my age, there wasn't a season where you weren't in the Champions League as an Arsenal fan until not that long ago. So we know what the competition was. We're still trying to figure out what it is today. And the simple way of getting through without any problems is to just pick up three points in all of your home games, especially against sides that you're fancy to beat. And as much as I want to respect Shakhtar, um, for you know what they are and who they are and I always factor in when I talk about Shakhtar the fact that they've had to play away from home for such a long time due to the conflict going on um, in their home region and all the rest of it they are a side that we should be beating and they are a side against whom I would make a number of changes and we'll come on to my starting 11 in a little bit some of the question marks uh, around players going into this uh, are interesting is Bukayo Saka going to return? We thought he was going to play at Bournemouth and he didn't. He was close apparently, but he didn't quite make it. Is Jurian Timber going to come back into the fold? Is Mikel Arteta going to shuffle the pack looking at the way we performed against Bournemouth? Because there were some players that I think were, were dealing with international break hangovers. What I would say is that if you want to win this Premier League title, there's no real space for that and you can't afford for that to be the case. Like you got to get back and you got to get straight back into it. And I understand that there are some players who played much later in the week than others. I understand that there are some players who travelled far greater distances than others. And I think Mikel Arteta tried uh, to protect those people as much as he could. He tried to protect Gabriel Martinelli, I think, because of the calf problem that he picked up on international duty, the, the lateness with which he returned, all the rest of it. But someone like Gabriel simply had to play. And listen, I don't think Gabriel was the problem on Saturday. But there were a few players in that group that weren't really um, at the level that we've come to expect from them. I've talked about the team selection. I talked about it in the post-match podcast, which we put out on Sunday morning. I talked about it in the uh, match day reaction episode that we dropped a few hours after the full-time whistle over on Patreon. I think Mikel Arteta got that wrong. And I've watched the game back again. And I've thought about it and I've processed it and I've mulled over it for a period of time now. And my opinion on that has not changed. We went into the game with a negative approach based on the selection that we made. And we went down that negative path when we went down to 10 men, when actually I thought 
the way that we'd set up from the off probably meant that Mikel Arteta could get away with staying with the players that he had on the pitch. He just needed to tweak it a little bit, make a few adjustments in-game. And I've been so happy with his in-game management in recent times. I've been so impressed by it. I think it's one of the areas in which it's undeniable that, generally speaking, Mikel Arteta has improved in. But on the day, it was all wrong. Now, what I will say about that is it's easy for me to say it's wrong. It's easy for me to say that wasn't right. It's easy for me to say I would have done X and I would have done Y. I'm not privy to the exact condition of all of those players. I don't know who was flagging. I don't know who was fit, who wasn't. I don't know if that played a part in the way that Mikel Arteta went. He was asked about Ethan Waneri not playing uh, from the start in his uh, pre-Shakhtar press conference. And I thought his comments around that were quite interesting. He talked about the player needing to be ready. He talked about the context of the game being right. I mean, I don't want to really lay into Mikel Arteta about Ethan Waneri because when Martin Odegaard got injured and people were talking about how we deal with that and how we cope with that and what the best way to go is, I was one of the people that said, don't throw this 17-year-old in and ask him to be Martin Odegaard because it isn't going to happen. You're not going to manage that. You're not going to be able to click a finger and turn one area into Odegaard overnight. Like he's on a journey. He's on a really good path and he's on the way, I think, to becoming a really, really top player. That didn't mean that I didn't want to see him used even when we were desperate. That didn't mean that I didn't want to see him used when we were lacking creativity all around. I just didn't think the solution to the Odegaard thing was throwing him in and asking him to play 90 minutes every week and demanding that he delivers. What we did was we found an alternative way. We went with the two false nines and that helped us get through that tricky period. But I certainly would have used one area in Saturday's scenario where we ended up with a load of defensive-minded players on the pitch and nowhere near enough creative spark. And that was just from the beginning. Then you go down to 10 men and you take off one of those forward-thinking players and you become even more negative and you've got nothing to offer going the other way. And when you lack threat in this league and you don't defend well, you'll be punished. And I know that sounds like a really obvious thing to say, but threat is really, really important. You need to pack a punch, but you also need people to fear the punch that you pack. And if you start taking off players that bring that to the table, what kind of message does that send to the opposition? It gives them encouragement. It gave Bournemouth a belief that they could go on and win that game at that stage. Whereas had we stayed with the 10 men in a more forward-thinking setup and a more forward-thinking shape, I, I don't think Bournemouth would have taken the confidence that they did from the red card. So it's one thing that it's happened and they've got a numerical advantage as a result of it, but then you're giving them a psychological advantage, I think, by reacting to it as a coach and as a manager in the wrong way. So I'm not changing my opinion on that. Will Saka be available tonight? For Shakhtar, don't know is the answer. If there's any doubt, I'd leave him and make sure that he's ready for Liverpool. Um, Jury and Timber, we could really do with him back now. Uh, now that Saliba suspended for Liverpool, we'll, we'll talk about that Liverpool game as the week goes on and how I think we should set up for it. I wouldn't mind Timber coming in as the right centre-back. I wouldn't mind Ben White going inside as the right centre-back and Timber coming in at right-back. What I don't want to see after the weekend is Jakob Kivior coming in and playing right centre-back. Um, that's that's not what I want to see. And that's with all due respect to him. I think he's better as the left centre-back, but I don't want to displace Gabriel. I think he is someone who, um, you know, who can do a job as a narrow defensive-minded left-back at times. But to trust him at centre-half in a game like Liverpool off the back of what we saw against Bournemouth, I think would be a massive risk for Mikel Arteta to take. And personally, I wouldn't take it. I guess I've been thinking a while about what the lineup should be tonight. And I've not found this easy because it's Tuesday. So it's early enough in the week for those that play to recover ahead of Sunday's game against Liverpool. There are some, though, who you feel are kind of in the red zone in terms of their fitness and in terms of the impact that the international breakers had on them. So do you protect some of those guys? 
I might have not played Saliba tonight, but now that he's suspended for Sunday, I think, why the hell not? He has to play. And so my team selection was a difficult one to come up with this time, but this is what I've gone with. So I'm going to talk you guys through it. I want to see what you guys think. I'm going to go Raya in goal. I don't want to mess around with the defence, not from the beginning anyway. I'm going to go White, Saliba, Gabriel and Calafiori across the back. My midfield is going to look quite different. I'm going to take Thomas Partey out. I know he didn't go away on international duty, but the idea of Thomas Partey playing three games in a week scares the living daylights out of me. So I'm going to take him out. I'm going to take Declan Rice out as well because I don't think he's been anywhere near his best this season. I think his role has been a little bit confused at times and I think that's contributed to him not being as effective and the absences around him have certainly had an impact on his game on an individual level. So I'm not sitting here saying that Declan Rice is terrible. I actually thought he was one of the better players on Saturday. But I'm going to take him out of the lineup here. Um, and I'm going to save him. I'm going to save him for the weekend. So my midfield is going to look like this. Jorginho at the base. I want to see Mikel Marino playing in his actual position, which for me is as a left eight. And then I want to see Ethan Waneri starting in that right eight position. Because... I think when you watch the display that we were served up on Saturday and you see the lack of creativity, there is just no case anymore for leaving this young man out in the absence of Martin Odegaard. So I want Waneri to play. I want Jorginho, Marino and Waneri to be the starting midfield. Some people might say that's a bit lightweight and it's a bit silly to try and do that in the UEFA Champions League. But I think with Calafiori inverting in the way that we expect him to with that solid defensive three remaining of White, Saliba and Gabriel, I think it's fine. I think you send Calafiori into that midfield to sit alongside Jorginho when we're on the ball and protect us against those transitional situations. Marino can play the eight role that I think he's meant to play and not be um, looked at as the second coming of Martin Odegaard because that's just not what he does. And let Ethan Waneri go and have that license and get involved in the attacking play. My front three, I'd bring Gabriel Jesus into the side. I think he needs minutes. I think he desperately needs minutes at the moment. I heard Tim Stillman on the Arsenal Vision podcast yesterday say that he was getting the shit minutes, which is true. Um, minutes that are very, very difficult to turn into something. Minutes that come when the team is in a dire position or, um, you know, the performance level generally has gone off the edge of a cliff. And then we're looking at that player and we're going, well, come on, this is your chance, do something. But they're bad minutes. So I think he needs minutes from the start. And I think in the Champions League against Shakhtar Donetsk, this is the time to use the squad and to start him. I would play Raheem Sterling from the right-hand side if there's any question about um, Bukayo Saka. In fact, I would play Raheem Sterling anyway. If Saka's a doubt or not 100%, then I'd play Sterling from the right. If Saka is ready to start, then I'd play Sterling on the left. I'd take Trossard out. And I'd have Saka and Sterling as my two wingers. But let's assume that Saka's not available because we don't know that he is. My front three is Jesus through the middle, Sterling right, Trossard left. I think when you look ahead to the weekend, and although the focus should be on tonight's game, it's impossible not to do that in some capacity. I think Martinelli and Saka are key for the weekend. I think it's imperative that we get Timber back. Um, so I, I wouldn't take any unnecessary risks with those players. I think Rice, as I said, was OK at the weekend, but not at the level that we need him to be. Um, a rest might help him. Marino looked off the pace to me and therefore needs minutes. So for me, he starts in this one and it's a game where the intensity level won't be the same. The tempo probably won't be the same. And I ultimately want to see players playing in their rightful positions. And to have Marino in the left eight means we get to have a good look at him rather than what we've seen recently, which is him coming on as part of a double pivot in the 4-4-2 and then him coming on or starting a game and playing the Martin Odegaard role, which again, we know is not really the, the ideal role for him. When I think about Shakhtar and where they're at, um, they're fourth in the Ukrainian league at the minute, which isn't really anything to, to go by because it's so early in the season. They've, they've had a decent start. There's just a few teams that have managed to amass slightly more points than them. I expect them to be right at the top of the division along with Dinamo Kiev come the end of the season. So I've got, I've not lost any respect for them as a result of that. Um, they did lose 3-0 to Atalanta 
in the Champions League already this season, and they were uh, held to a nil-nil draw by Bologna. So this isn't the greatest Shakhtar Donetsk side going, but it's an opportunity for Arsenal to put another three points on the board in this league phase to consolidate our position, to improve our position further, um, relieve some of the pressure that might come further down the line in the league phase if we get as many points as we can on the board nice and early. That helps, obviously. Um, but it's an opportunity for Arsenal to bounce back from what happened on Saturday. That's the the biggest thing about this game for me. And I think that's the great thing about playing on a Tuesday after a disappointing weekend result. You get to go again and put that right. And it's not going to change the outcome at Bournemouth and it's not going to change the damage that it did to us in terms of the league table, but it can certainly help uh, boost confidence levels again, which I think is really, really important. My prediction for tonight's game is Arsenal 2, Shakhtar Donetsk 0. Let me know what you think in the comments section as well. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe with the rest of it. If you're listening on audio, leave us a review and make sure uh, you're signed up to the Chronicles of Aguna on Patreon. If you are, you'll get our match day reaction pod tonight. Before I leave Emirates Stadium, that will be with you uh, so you can get some instant reaction to the game, sort of instant reaction to the game. Um, normally takes me about an hour, hour and a bit, just depending on how long it takes to wrap up all my media duties. But uh, we'll be back, of course, on uh, Wednesday morning with an in-depth look back on Arsenal's hopeful victory uh, over Shakhtar Donetsk. So, um, yeah, make sure you're tuned in, make sure you're subscribed, all the rest of it, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode. Until then, take care of yourselves. Have a great Tuesday and up the Arsenal.